Hello, everybody. You should already be able to see my screen, I guess so, at least. And this is just a uh, theme site which I have in SharePoint Online. And my goal today will be to use uh, an Azure function and PMP PowerShell in that Azure function to connect to this site uh, and using PMP PowerShell doing stuff uh, against this uh, or on top of this uh, target uh, uh, SharePoint Online site. So first of all, in order to create our solution, I need to create a function app in Azure. And just to give you an idea of what are the basic settings, you simply need to add a new function app. You will have to select, of course, a target subscription and the resource group in which you will create the resource. You have to provide Sorry, a name. Paolo, Paolo, yeah. Paolo, can I slightly increase the font? Uh, I'm, I know I'm getting old uh, and my eyes are getting old, but it's so small. If you can zoom in just a bit um, because like so much this. white space. Excellent. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. We take care of old people, so don't worry. I'm I'm fine with that. <laughs> so uh, provide a name for the function app. Let's say um, I don't know PMP call uh, something. This will be just a, a fake one because I already created one. In fact, creating a function app takes a while, and I want to save some time. I will target uh, .NET Core, for example, and version 3.1. And my scenario, I usually target West Europe because it is convenient for me. Uh, but once you do that, you will have uh, an Azure function app uh, uh, created for you, which, as I said, I already did uh, a few minutes ago. This uh, function app uh, is uh, completely empty. I just created it. And now, in order to use it, in order to host uh, uh, PMP PowerShell, we need to do some configuration changes. Uh, I would like to say, unfortunately, we need to do some configuration changes because right now we still have a PMP PowerShell uh, built on top uh, of dot .NET framework, and we do not support yet uh, .NET uh, Core or .NET Standard. As such, uh, I need to configure in the platform features or from here from function app settings, I need to configure my function app to run with runtime version to version one so that I will be able to use uh, .NET Framework and PMP uh, classic PMP PowerShell. It will take uh, a while to update this setting. So in the meantime, what I can do to prepare my environment is to go to uh, PowerShell. For example, I uh, use uh, uh, PowerShell IZ, even if I, I can eventually use Visual Studio Code or whatever else, but I still like this one, so I am keep on using this one. And I can use the command led called save module, and I will save the uh, PMP PowerShell uh, library locally on my machine in a folder, which will be this one. And right now I'm targeting this specific version of uh, uh, PMP PowerShell. There is a reason why this is the January, 2020, January 2020. And I'm not using the latest one because in that one right now we have a, a small issue when you run PMP PowerShell in uh, uh, an Azure function. We are working on it and hopefully we will fix it by the next uh, uh, monthly release, which will be uh, the 9th of March. But right now I suggest you to use this version of the library. By executing this command, you will see uh, that PowerShell will download all of the assemblies or all of the files of PMP PowerShell in the local folder that you provide, which I already did again just to save some of our time. And here I have in this folder all of the assemblies which made up the uh, PMP PowerShell library so that while we download the files and we set the runtime version to one in our um, Azure function, we can then create a, a, an initial function in our function app. So my application is now configured. Let me add a new function. The new uh, Azure function, I will create my own custom function. We leverage the uh, experimental language support in order to be able to use uh, uh, PowerShell. And I will select, for example, an HTTP triggered uh, uh, function using PowerShell. I will provide a name for my function, which can be, for example, uh, let's say play with the PMP uh, function, and I will create it. Once I have created uh, my Azure function, I can upload all of the assemblies that I downloaded with the save module command let into the uh, uh, setup of my uh, target function app. In order to do that, I go to my uh, function app, platform features, and I can go to advanced tools, Kudo. Using Kudo, I can have a, a low level access 
to the file system of my uh, function app. So I can go to debug console PowerShell, for example, and here I can search for my uh, Azure function. So under site www root, we will see that we have a folder which is called exactly with the name of our function. In there, we can create a new subfolder called modules. And inside this folder, we, we will create another subfolder, which I will call exactly with the name of the PMP PowerShell uh, um, package. So SharePoint PMP PowerShell Online, this is the name. And uh, there is a link to a document uh, in docs.microsoft.com where we explain, uh, for example, how to use this technique to extend uh, a site design uh, creating an Azure function which will be based on PMP PowerShell. And there you will find uh, detailed instructions step by step uh, in order uh, to do exactly what I'm doing right now. So once I have created this folder, I can go into the folder and I can copy the whole content of the folder that I downloaded before using save module. It will take a while, but it shouldn't be that uh, much. So in a matter of few seconds, we will have all of the assemblies copied into this folder. And we will be then ready to start using uh, PMP PowerShell in our Azure function. However, in order to use PMP PowerShell, we need to have a set of credentials or an identity to use in order to connect to our target environment. And that's another key point of discussion in this demo. Should be a matter of a few more seconds to have all of the assemblies ready. And I would suggest you to wait for it rather than playing uh, uh, here and in the area where you can configure the content or the definition of your Azure function, because every now and then you can see a, a file locked by the upload process. So better to wait for the upload to be fully completed and then move back uh, uh, to the Azure function, which is what I'm going to do right now because the upload is now completed. So I can go back to my function app. I can get my uh, Azure function which is a PowerShell based, and I can uh, start writing my function. Of course, I will use the connect PMP, oops, PMP online commandlet to connect to my target environment. But I want to get the target URL of the site as an input argument for my HTTP based uh, function. And at the same time, I want to have access to the target uh, SharePoint Online site using a set of credentials which I will store as settings inside uh, my Azure function configuration. So first of all, let's start to, uh, having a look at the uh, source code of the function that I can use. So this one, let me copy it and explain you what is happening in this Azure function, will be the actual function that I'm going to use. So I get a request, an HTTP request, and I simply get the raw content and I parse it as a JSON message. I assume that in the JSON message, I will have a, a property called the target URL, which will represent the URL of the target site. I also assume to have in the configuration settings of my Azure function right now, the uh, username and the password of a service account that I want to use. Pretty soon we will see that we can also use uh, an application only uh, configuration in order to get a, a, an access token using an app only uh, configuration and we can skip having a username and a password stored in the configuration of the Azure function. But step by step, we will get there. So right now I still have a username and a password. What I can do, I can read the password from the configuration settings and you can eventually store that setting in a key vault to properly protect uh, the password information. Then I create uh, a, a new set of credentials based on the service account, username and the password that I got from the settings. And then I can use the connect PMP online, providing the target URL of the site and the credentials that I just created. By doing that, I can then access the target site using all of the PMP commandlets that we have, and I can play with the target site. Of course, we can uh, test this uh, function going into the test section and providing the target URL, which will be the actual URL of the site that I want to target, so this guy. 
this will be the test JSON message for my uh, Azure function. Of course, I still need to configure in the configuration settings of my uh, function app, the service account uh, username and password. So let me save the function and let me show you where you can configure those information. So here under platform features, you have configuration. And in this section, you can configure the uh, service account, uh, username and password, which is something that I already did in my uh, uh, scenario, just to avoid typing uh, my password right now. So here I already have a function app uh, exactly uh, like this, the one we just saw. And here I have my function. I already have in the settings my username and password for the service account. And if the PowerShell will show up, yeah, here it is. I can simply run this function to show you the uh, final outcome. And you can see here we have the URL of the target site. So let's try, let's run it. You will see all the assemblies will be loaded into the uh, process and then we will have access to the target site collection and we will be able to just read the title for the sake of doing something. But of course you can do whatever you like using PMP PowerShell and targeting the target environment. Hopefully the network will be with us and the output will be available on my screen soon. Okay, and here it is. You are connected to the site uh, URL um, uh, X, Y, and Z and here is the title of the target site. So now, this is a, 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 an approach that you can use, but at the same time, as I said, you need to store the username and the password of a service account into the configuration setting, which is not always a good approach. So why not uh, making one more step and using uh, an application-only access token with an application registering in Azure Active Directory, which is what I'm going to do. So let me switch back to the tenant where I have my target site. So it should be here okay let me search for it okay here it is and if i go to portal.azure.com and i go into the settings of azure active directory under app registrations i can register a new application i can call it whatever you like so pmp call uh, 2020 uh, 0305 uh, demo for example it will be a single tenant application in my scenario. I don't think we need a multi-tenant one in this case. And I will have to keep track of the client ID of my application. And I will have to configure in the application permissions, the application permissions that I want in order to access the target resource. So if I click on add permissions, I can select to use SharePoint online. I want to use application permissions and I will select to use, for example, site read all because it is what I need to just read the title of a site. By doing that and by refreshing this page, I will be able to grant a tenant level with an admin account, which is the one I'm using, the permission to the app. So now I'm ready to use this application registering Azure Active Directory, but I also need, because I'm targeting SharePoint Online, to configure an X509 certificate, which I will use to authenticate against Azure Active Directory to get an app only access token. How can I do that? Back in PowerShell, I can execute another uh, PMP command let, which is the new PMP Azure certificate. You will have to provide a common name for a certificate that will be created for you. You will have to provide a, a number of years for uh, the um, lifetime of your certificate, a password, which can be whatever you like. You will store the output PFX file, so the one including the private key, and the output.cer file, so the one just including the public part of the certificate. In your file system, this is just a fake password that I'm going to use. And this certificate will be used to identify and to authenticate the application against Azure Active Directory. So let me run this script. Now I have in my local folder a certificate. So what I can do, I can go back to Azure Active Directory and in Certificates and Secrets, I can upload a new certificate I can browse on my file system to get the certificate that I just created. And this certificate will be used to identify the identity of my app in Azure Active Directory. So back on the Azure function side of the story, so right here, if I go back to my Azure function, I can configure under SSL, so uh, the SSL settings of my function, in the private key certificate section, I can upload the PFX file that I just created. I can provide the password 
that I configured, which is of course a trivial one right now. I can upload my PFX file into the uh, function app. By doing that, I will be able to access the certificate and the private key of the certificate inside my Azure function. How can we do that? Well, first of all, I need to configure a bunch of settings in the configuration of my app. So I will have to configure the application setting for the thumbprint of my certificate. So I will create a new item called thumbprint, which will have the value has the value of the thumbprint of this oh, sorry of the certificate that I just created. I will configure the client ID of my application, so client ID, and I will copy the ID from the overview tab of my application right here. I will provide the tenant name which is the target tenant that, that I want to use. So uh, tenant, which will be psdev.onmicrosoft.com, which is the tenant I'm going to use. And I will also have to configure in the settings of my function app that I want to allow the function app to load the uh, certificate. So I will configure the website underscore load underscore certificate setting to asterisk, which means you can load every any kind of certificate, or I can even specify the thumbprint of the specific certificate that I want to load. By doing that in my Azure function, and we are almost done, I will be able, of course, I need to save my settings. I will be able to switch to a different syntax, which is the one I'm going to show you now. So I will be able to read from the environment, so from the configuration, the tenant I, uh, name, the client ID, and the thumbprint, and I will be able to use the connect PMP online, providing those settings instead of a set of credentials based on a service account. So if I do that, and if I copy this into the definition of my Azure function, matter of few seconds and we should be done. Come on. Okay, here we are. This is my new function in which I will simply get the tenant, the client ID, and the thumbprint, and I will connect an app only access token, and I will be still able to access the target environment and to do whatever I want to do using PMP PowerShell without the need to store any kind of password in the configuration of my function app. So, quite a step by step long journey, but you can uh, get to the point of being able to consume a target SharePoint Online environment using PMP PowerShell within an Azure function.